Critical national infrastructure, cloud computing, the Internet of Things, hackable medical devices, Google Glass, living through the web. New technologies always present new opportunities, but not just for the regular user, for criminals as well. Project 2020 was designed to bring together thought leaders from around the world to consider the opportunities and the challenges posed by this new technology and to give constructive advice to try and face up to possible futures. And along with Europol, another organisation who is a member, uh, we created a document called Project 2020, and it's a discussion document for the future of, uh, of cybercrime and obviously cybercrime prevention. They created do a document called 2020 in which they analysed uh, the way of the, how the future technologies are going to develop. It's a long document, it's 20-something pages. Uh, it's very interesting, but it's also very difficult to drive interest in something as dense or as long as that. A big challenge was how to build a story about the document which was written as a white paper, uh, how to make interesting nine-episode story, how to make it engaging, as engaging as possible. And they asked us, OK, we have this document, and now give us a story. This wasn't your typical film project. Uh, it was unusual because the world that we were filming was already created by Trend Micro and Europol for the 2020 report. It was so detailed and complex, we just had to find the, the best way or the best ideas to show them to the viewer so he would be interested. So we decided that uh, as soon as we saw the, the content of the final version of Project 2020, it was just perfect for a series. Casting was crazy because we were casting actors from all around Europe and we were doing it through the internet. We checked the pictures, we checked the films which were available online for them. Thousands of emails, hundreds of demos and it took us two months to just go through them all and, and filter out the, the best ones that we like. Chris, we have people from Germany, we have people from uh, the UK, we have even people from uh, Vancouver, uh, but this way we actually made sure that we have actors which are perfect for this role. Kinoko is the original character which you can find in the document uh, the whole part which is describing the end user experience in the future is from Kinoko perspective. So it's not so much Kinoko as a character that I like, it's the part that Kinoko plays in, in the overall story. Um, when the story begins, um, she's introduced to you as just a regular consumer, but she's hiding a deep, dark secret. Th this is not my fault, I, I swear. I work, I don't hang out much, I, I keep to myself, I don't even know bad people, I didn't do anything wrong, you have to believe me. Stop. Stop coming out. You just don't know, does she have secrets or is she just a very quiet person who sticks to herself? Um, and she's also very cool, She, under any circumstance she kind of has 
good control of the situation overall. You'll see there's a lot of very cool things that she can do with just one gadget that she has and with the eyes and there's a couple of very cool inventions that Kinuko is totally uh, using and uh, using for her advantage. My own personal favorite character uh, is Detective Carson. Now what? He's a little bit old-fashioned type of policeman. Yeah, the Beatles, the Rolling Stones, the Kings. When we saw him, when we saw his, even his picture on the internet, we knew that this is the guy to play this part. I'm playing uh, police captain Harrison. He likes the, the, uh, the, the police methods from the past. Plus, he has a little bit problems to switch the new type of work. Captain, can I ask you a question? Why are you such a dinosaur? So he's kind of stuck between the two worlds. People love uh, bad guy in the movie. No, late. <laughs> yeah, I love all the characters. I mean, they're all great, great characters and we took a long time trying to develop them and give each of them a background and a motivation and a reason for doing what they're doing. It's not just one-dimensional people. One of the best things for us about working with Black Rabbit is that we still get to have very substantial creative input into um, you know, building the, the storyline, building the characters, writing and editing the script. We're on set every day, um, you know, noting changes that we want to make in the shots. Um, so it's a real collaborative effort and uh, it's great to be that involved in the creative process. When you think corporate video, you imagine a uh, bigger logo, product placement and, and the sort. This is not it. This is branded content. This is going a step further. From reading the final version of the document through building a story, uh, doing a casting, selecting places to shoot in until the first day of shooting, it took us six months. It was the middle of production, fourth or fifth day. I arrive on set early in the morning and the Agoda is there and greeting me and <laughs> saying that Rebecca, our actress, had a car accident just a few minutes before and she's in the hospital with a broken elbow. I thought, well, this is over. I mean, you know, um, what are we going to do? Uh, you know, what's she going to do? What's going to happen with Rebecca? And after a couple of hours, Rebecca came back. We talked about it. You know, she decided to give it a try. And, you know, she, she nailed it. She nailed the part. It was incredible. And, you know, everybody was in awe and she became our hero. I love pop culture, so does Bastian, so does Rick and a lot of, of our crew. And during the whole shoot, we were figuring out ways to put some references and elements of different science fiction classics into the, into the, into the, into the series. A lot of them was, of course, Blade Runner. Um, we had some of these small uh, paper unicorns made by Rick and Kasha and we placed them in different parts of the, of the scenes. And this was our way uh, to make a tribute to the sci-fi classics. Uh, so we put a lot of hidden, hidden references in the scenes and the different places and the different locations. So uh, hopefully the viewer is going to have a lot of fun finding out the secrets and the hidden elements all around the set. But what we are showing in our series is that also technology brings the risk and we are enthusiastic about technology, we believe in technology, but at the same time we need to be aware about the risk and we need to know how to prevent them. Project 2020 was, uh, was perfect for Trend Micro. We're a company that's always had a reputation as being forward-looking and forward-thinking. Um, and making a film of this nature with such a wide audience really gives us a chance to demonstrate that that's who we are.